What a conference, right? Right. That's how I'm feeling. Woo. That's how I'm feeling. And what what a closer with Dr. Canton. Oh man, I had tears in my eyes during that session. Tears of joy, tears of remembering things that I feel like I suppressed and were, were triggered, you know, in in you know in, in, a, in a in a constructive way, you know. Wow, such such powerful words, such powerful words. Yeah. So let's just have a let's just have a chop up and invite folks to make their comments and maybe ask their questions in the Q and A. Um, I know I was at absolutely every one of these sessions, and uh, I think there may have only been one of the pre preps um, with speakers that I could not make because something else was happening. But it's been a busy, busy, busy week, and. Um, but I feel really good. I feel really good. I yes. learned so much this week. We had some really super dynamic um, folks talking to us. And so, you know, where y'all at? How are you feeling? I feel so inspired. I feel so inspired and I feel so affirmed, uh, especially I just, um, Dr. Wood, uh, Luke Wood, I was like, yes, Yes, yes. I kept kept saying yes, yes when I was listening to his presentation, and I was just like, "Oh, I yes." I never thought about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so there were so many moments where I felt really affirmed. I felt heard. I felt like, "Okay, this is my community." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got a whole ton of books I need to have now. <laughs> I'm feeling like if anybody wants to start a book club for the summer, uh, we should pick a few of these and go with that. Not to give us more work, but you know, that is what we do here. Who else? Um, something that struck me during Dr. Canton's talk, and I think this is not, I'm not the only person who has had this experience. I think so many of us here in this room who we work with on our campuses and statewide. So he was talking about 20 years ago in 2002, walking into that CFA room and saying, no one here is like me. Mm -hmm. And I had the exact opposite experience when I went to my first equity conference in 2020. And I had already been involved in our campus CFA for a few years or a couple years, but when I went to that conference at the invitation of Dr. Sharon Elise, I showed up there and I said, oh, this is where everyone who looks like this is. Like, we don't have those spaces on our campus in that, in a way that it's not just a, it's not just an aff affiliate group. It's a group of people who look like this and who want to do this work and who have power and use it to change things. And so in that moment is when I was like, I, this is something that I need to be a part of. And I can honestly say, I don't know if I would be in academia anymore if it weren't for CFA. And mm -hmm. I don't think I'm the only person who that's true for. Mm -hmm. And so it just really struck me, um, Cecil's comment about what it was like 20 years ago and how it has so transformed uh, not just our organization, but our whole state. Like we, we make a huge impact on this state. And as we heard from the, um, the cast panel, not just the state, the country, because there's 40 other universities now looking to include mm -hmm. cast as a protected category. Mm -hmm. So I just, I was so struck by it. And we talk about how it's an everyday battle. It's a long, a long haul thing. And 20 years is really long, but it's been like in history, it's short, right? It's a blip and such a change and such a material impact on so many people's lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where are you, Chris? How are you feeling? Yeah, thank you. That was perfect. I was going to try to chime in right now because uh, I really wanted to dovetail with some of the things that Talitha was uh, saying. First, let me just say that this has been an amazing equity conference. I really loved it. I really, I wish I had been able to go to every single thing. Unfortunately, I have that, you know, that stuff called teaching. 
<laughs> that kind of kicks in. So I was starting, it was really interesting because in my class on Thursday, you know, we had, we had Dr. Gloria Ladson Billings in the morning, which just was amazing. I mean, what such an amazing presentation. And then we had moving into Astra Taylor, who was actually speaking while I was teaching. But of course, I made the topic of my, my class discussion actually talking about student debt because that class consists of graduating seniors who are launching into their lives. And many of them are very concerned. And in fact, they are working on their goals for how they're going to start off to try to make sure that they don't wind up in uh, you know, having problems with their, with their debt because they all are aware that six months after they're graduating, their, their loans are coming due. So um, you know, I, I, I started to even talk about the equity conference when I wasn't in it. Uh, when Dr. Gina Garcia was giving her presentation during part of that, it was, it was a little bit ungraceful, I know, but I, I now I'm at the stage where I am physically part on campus and part not, which means I'm now no longer just in a computer screen. And so I'm having to be in a physical space and then run to try to get to my cyberspace so that I can do my work. And just when Dr. Garcia was talking about some of the research related to schools, I was walking past the middle school that was right by my house and students are getting out. And it was just so perfect because in that context of that moment, it was like, here's this living lab of the things that we've been talking about and learning about on this day where we're talking about the intersections of how curriculum is influenced by things like critical race theory and how there's political discourse over critical race theory that doesn't really match the reality of what's going on in our schools. But yet at the same time, we have equity issues that we have to be concerned about from pre-K, right, from transitional pre-K all the way through a doctoral level of, of, of study, right? And so we just have so many things with our, with our education system to work on. Uh, but also similar to Talitha, I just want to say and hold up Dr. Cecil Canton, because when I first started getting involved in CFA, Cecil was there. I, do, I personally do not know a CFA without Cecil. Uh, the first time I went to a statewide CFA event was probably about 2006 or 2007, and I did notice that, you know, things were different. I remember among the people that I met very early on were Cecil, and I also remember meeting Charles Toons early on and uh, Leslie Bryan and a few other folks. So my experience of walking into CFA was not necessarily walking into a white space, but my experience was walking into a space that when I looked up on the dais, of who were the folks that held positions of leadership. It was not all white, but it was largely white. And, and I could see that dynamic play out and I look to see how that has shifted and changed today. That's a, it's a very different place, it's a different space. Mm -hmm. uh, for me personally, I'm grateful for all the folks that I've known in positions of leadership and CFA because I've learned something from everybody, right? And that's regardless of anybody's particular identity or background. But I think part of all those things that I've learned helped me lead to me to be in this position today and I think it's really important that what we do as an organization now is really continue and to deepen our ability to cultivate spaces where we all can develop our own leadership skills and our own leadership qualities. And that's something for which I'm actually really thankful. I wanna to say to Cecil because Cecil has believed in me uh, even when it's like, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what to do in this situation, right? I don't, I don't quite see the full picture of how this operates in context with other things. And Cecil has never once failed to take the time with me to talk, to have conversation, to explain, to discuss, to hear what I have to say, right? To hear the things that I'm interested in and, and, and all that. And, and so I try every day to uh, take those kinds of things that I've learned from Cecil and his leadership and to be able to develop a leadership style that one day I'll, I'll, when I grow up, I could be a little closer to being like Cecil, but always being myself. And that's something that I, that I you know, that's important to me, but it's also something that's important to me that has been affirmed by Cecil. Right, and that is one of those things is that it's always our goal to be our best self, not somebody else's best self. Right, right on, Chris. Listen, that's uh, that reminds me that uh, someone just posted a comment saying, can we get a collection of Cecil sayings? And I think yes, because those are, those are what black folks call mother wit uh, is what he's offering us. And they are, are axioms that uh, carry you through life. So Nick, I saw your head bouncing vigorously with Chris's comments, and I know that you got something to say. <laughs> so much resonance. Uh, no, you know the sessions that Chris mentioned were all ones that I really, uh, really enjoyed and par uh, participating and, and and learning from. I know for me, uh, especially the um, the the work that uh, Jumake had shared June uh, June Case with. Uh, man, that again such impactful such an impactful narrative and, and her journey and the lessons that she's gained and and, and is and a partner with us in cfa that really that really struck me 
Um, you know, and also the day before Gloria Ladson's Billings talk, I, I hope participants know that they got uh, over, you know, two semesters worth of, of knowledge uh, packaged really succinctly and really accessibly in that in that little hour and 15 minutes because she covered everything. She covered everything that we need, that we need to know in terms of the FAQs of ethnic studies, critical race theory, the current challenges around uh, around those, but also, you know, the, the intersections. And so those are some sessions that I really, really learned uh, learned a lot from. Again, like other folks, I was I was kind of in and out teaching here and there. So I'm really looking forward to catching up with the uh, the recordings. Uh, I know the recordings are being made available. So I've, I've got some homework this weekend to take care of. Yeah, you know, I I was I'm thinking about our very first speaker who was Imani Barber, and, and I'm thinking about Laurent Corrales and their talk, and the intersections of race and gender and uh, gender identity and ableism and all of the intersections that the the com disability community brings. Um, there there is such power in their organizing uh, because they, yeah, it's just such power. And Imani, I mean, she's another one that I just like, I collected a whole bunch of little, little, little quips from her uh, and we'll look forward to incorporating them in our work somehow. Aparna. I completely agree with you on the intersectionality of our speakers uh, and their talks. Um, I felt like, the myriad of topics that we covered um, really, really cover so many things around race, gender, um, um, uh, um, ableism, caste. I mean, I feel so much more informed about all of the different categories that we have to be mindful of mm -hmm. uh, when we're talking about our biases and our stereotyping and um, and envisioning a future that is socially, economically um, just. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt really, really educated um, um, and informed through all of the sessions. I really, really uh, appreciated the care, on, care and healing sessions, like mm -hmm. um, um, June's uh, Juma, uh, Jumake sessions and uh, the yoga one, the- Susanna. Susanna. I was like, oh my God, I have to take care of myself. And even though like last year, I've been thinking a lot about how all of the things that happens on campus and all of the things that I get involved really, really are taxing on me. And I feel I have to amp up my care and healing. So that is one big thing that I'm taking away from the sessions. All right, all right. You know, Lisa Karamura just uh, makes a great point here, which is that when we had the uh, equity conference in person, you know, it was a tough choice because we had concurrent sessions and we had a lot of conversation about whether or not we should have concurrent sessions for the virtual. And we decided to not have concurrent sessions, but to have a quick succession of sessions, right? Uh, so she's uh, appreciating that that's how we did because she got to go to more. And especially with it being virtual, she got to participate in, in more sessions. So thank you, Lisa. And thank you for complimenting us on the job well done. We appreciate that too. Uh, Pam is Pam Rodella is saying something similar and being thankful for the organizing space that is CFA that makes her feel at home, uh, that it is her place and her space. So appreciating you, Pam. I'm paraphrasing what you said. Um, yeah. Uh, so Dave Gov is reminding us that uh, on CISO sayings, they should be collected in an appendix in the second edition. So CISO, I know you're still in the background here. So uh, there you go. <laughs> Charles, how about you? What are, what are you, what's sitting in your, your heart and your spirit and you're thinking about this morning? Oh, afternoon now. Well, first of all, I just echoing, I'll echo what everyone else has already said in terms of the variety of sessions, uh, how deeply presenters went into the topics. Uh, and then, but I noticed some common threads throughout that I'm gonna take away. Uh, one is the importance of us telling our stories. Uh, that was real clear for me. There was also in, in many of the sessions, 
um, this theme of our self-care. Um, and today, of course, uh, Dr. Wood called it radical self-care, uh, that doing this work really does take its toll on us, and we need to be mindful of that. I saw, um, you know, just so many of the topics are ones that we we need to even hear again in some kind of way. Uh, that struck me. And it was really like attending a conference. Uh, that's what I want to take away from it. It was actually a, a, a reprieve from some of the CFA work that we're doing every day that, that we could come to a conference, learn and grow and take so much information away. Mm -hmm. so Thank that's you, what I'm gonna say. I, you said You said radical self-care and I, I know that our our four sub themes really informed our, our guests um, and that we prepped with them, we met with them, we talked with them, we dialogued with them in advance. But I, I wanna bring us back to something that uh, Reverend Carlene Griffith Sekou uh, reminded us in her talk. And that is that self-care is one thing, but it's community care, you know, it's community care. And part of our community care is in is creating the welcoming space that we've created it's in vibing with each other it's in building genuine relationships with each other it's in caring about each, each other it's in saying as sharon likes to remind us that we live in human bodies and we need a break sometimes uh, and that break means that doesn't mean that you don't care. It doesn't mean that we've thrown you away. It means that we recognize your humanity and we'll be here when you get back. As a matter of fact, if you're gone too long, we're gonna start calling you because that's what we do in CFA, right? So, so that, that's the community care part of it. I mean, yes, do what you need to do for yourself, but you know, part of, part of your community care is our community care, back to the notion of Ubuntu, right? Sure. Can I throw one more statement out real Absolutely. quick? The fact that uh, Dr. Canton ended this uh, conference week uh, was just so uh, amazing because in talking about how we got here, this particular uh, equity conference week shows our transformation as a union. And it's not to say anything against any of the previous conferences, but this one went to another level. Uh, and for Cecil to give us uh, his testimony to his experience in CFA, uh, for many of us who are here now to uh, recognize his important role in our own lives and our work here in the union, it was just an apt way to end the conference. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I'm going to read something for from Lisa Johnson, which is thank you so much. And I'm sorry, everyone else, I didn't read because they disappeared on my screen, but I was paraphrasing because I remembered what you said. So, but I see Lisa's now is still here. Uh, uh, Lisa is thanking us and saying, noting is not lost on us that you came straight out of contract negotiations to organize this conference. And the fact that you organized past conferences and kickoffs while still organizing, negotiating, and talking those really hard blows from management, of taking those really hard blows from management. I hope you know how grateful we are for all of you. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, yeah, that is why we were uh, delayed. We normally would have nine months of planning. I think we, we had maybe three, something like that. Uh, but you know, I it, thank God for virtual because it made the it made it more accessible for these folks to join us. And I, I got to tell you, and I know that Kiki will back me up that, uh, but for sure in my conversations with people, they were excited to be talking to us. Folks know who CFA is. Uh, they were excited about the work that we're doing. And if you heard, you heard Imani talk about the importance of relationship with labor unions. We heard Astra Taylor talk about the importance of relationships with labor unions. We heard Gloria Latson Billings talk about the importance of the work we're doing around AB 1460. Um, we heard 
uh, June talk about the importance of what we're doing in relating to our students and relating to each other in the work that we do. So, so um, I think this is just it's just it's another uh, it's another pin in our cushion, uh, a step along our way, and an, also an absolute indication of our continued transformation, of our continued uh, living the learning organization that we are. And sharing your reflection. Oh my goodness. It has been such an amazing week. I do feel I've been steeped in the conference every day. Of course, that's the CFA way. It's everyday CFA. Um, it's just been such a rich gumbo of everything. I think that it articulated all of the themes so beautifully. I think that what we are leaving with is an opportunity to ask ourselves, how can I bring this to campus? You know, how can we work together to create those safer spaces on campus where we will walk in? Because I know what Cecil saying when I walked into CFA, it was very, it was like stepping into cold water. I held my nose and jumped in because it was a wall of whiteness. It was male. It was, you know, not welcoming. How can we create those spaces on campus? We've been pushing after our anti-Black racism demands to for um, resource centers for students, but we need those too. We need physical spaces where, you know, we can walk in and know we're going to meet people in there who share our values, who, you know, are not going to be dropping microaggressions on us. We need some relief on campus from that ongoing racial battle fatigue, as I know so many of us feel it. And it's really, you know, I, I feel for so many of my colleagues knowing what they've gone through this last couple of years, uh, the battle fatigue from COVID and the battle fatigue from the anti-Black racism, the anti-Asian racism, the ongoing colonialism, the ongoing xenophobia. There is so much that confounds us and we need to recognize the joy that we get. I mean, this work for me is joyful and the joy of working with people who are similarly committed. So I just take from this so much. I have piles of papers and notes that I will have to read through and type up and get all those books and read them. Yes, to the book club. This has been so inspiring, illuminating, and everything we hoped it would be. I really want to thank the tri chairs who came together to work on this all through all the details and Audrina, most of all, because I wanna say you have been the glue that held this together. And I want everybody who is listening to know Audrina Redman, right? This is the person, this, this is the time, glue. She this will fall and told you into anything. <laughs> But what that means is that she thought of it. She planned. She knew what was needed. And, you know, women holding up the sky, you've been holding up this conference, Audrina, and our ARSJ work as our director of that work in CFA. And I just so appreciate you. Thank That's you, Shamir. Too kind. People. It is two minutes after the hour, after the time we said we would adjourn. And all of us here could keep talking for a little while longer, you know that. Uh, but we won't hold you. Uh, we will thank you for being here. Look forward to next year, March of 2023.